Hey, and welcome to the show. Uh, today I am uh, talking, uh, or today I'm reading, rather, uh, from uh, Bard's.ed. Uh, Bard uh, economic economist, uh, L. Randall Ray, who is an mmt uh on the impacts of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to fight inflation. Now, he begins with uh, the, the professor of economic. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, L. Randall Ray, professor of economics and senior scholar at the Levy Economics Institute of uh, Bard College, and Yiba uh, Narcissian uh, argue, argue on the Hill that a Fed rate hike seems certain, yet raising rates is more likely to raise unemployment and slow growth than have any impact on our current inflation problem. We must find a better way to think about and deal with inflation. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to inflation control, but what is clear is that interest rates are a very imprecise tool for influencing prices. In the current circumstance, the more appropriate solution would be to work to alleviate supply-side constraints. That, however, requires much more work and internet and international internationally or inter- intentionally. There we go. Uh, than a stroke of a pen to change interest rates, which cauliflower, uh, which camouflages and uh, action rather than the cop out. It has proven to be rights rate and neurosion. Let's see. Uh, let's read that full opinion if I can. I didn't realize I should have looked into this, but I didn't realize that I actually went into you know a particular area, then into the hill. <laughs> so God, my fault for not looking. Anyway, can we have a trying? Um, money, many economic interest rates to hike. The census seems uh, this time is now a rate hike in March seems certain. Yet rate, raising rates is more likely to raise unemployment and slow growth than have an impact on our current uh, inflation rate. Uh, let's see, those advocate too much demand. They argue that fiscal stimulus was too big. And what we're dealing with is a uh, not demand-driven inflation in an over- overheated economy. The COVID crisis started as a supply-side crisis that severely disrupted production, causing massive layoffs and furloughs. Income and demand crashed. Relief checks and uh, par- partially restored income, but the supply side is still shaky with continuing supply chain disruption, bottlenecks, and price gouging. The war in Ukraine will intensify and prolong such problems. Biden, uh, last round of relief, is repeatedly targeting uh, targeted at the moment that supposedly pushed the economy beyond full employment. It is undoubtedly true that if the relief had never come, Americans would be much poorer the unemployment rate would be higher and inflation would be less of a problem. But the but this wouldn't resolve uh, you know, resolve the supply side problems and Americans would be worse off. Pundits suppose that the Fed can engineer a soft landing, i.e. lower inflation without hurting economic growth. By managing inflation expectations, or by managing uh, inflation expectations, a steady stream of small small rate hikes spread over a year or two is supposed to signal to markets the that the Fed is serious about fighting inflation that lowers inflation expectations so that workers reduce their wage demands and firms temper uh, temper price increases. However, there is no evidence to support this belief. For a decade after the global financial crisis, the Fed kept rates near zero to signal that it would and wanted to raise inflation to its 2% uh, target. Both actual inflation and inflation expectations uh, stubbornly refused to budge. In recent months, actual inflation and inflation uh, inflation expectations rose above the Fed target rate, even as the Fed continually argued that we were experiencing only transitory inflation. In other words, the exp- inflation expectation basically is, uh, we call that uh, speculation. 
as the Fed continue to argue that, okay, uh, but longer term market expectations of inflation remained well grounded. Furthermore, the Fed has never managed to guide economy, uh, economy to a guide the economy to a soft landing with rate hikes. Many points point to the Fed Chairman uh, Paul uh, Volcker's interest rate hikes in the 1970s to 20% and beyond and above 15% for a couple of years, but conveniently leave out what followed. The economy crashed into a deep recession and a series of financial crises, the, th- uh, the thrift crisis of the early 1980s, the uh, development nation debt crisis later on in the 1980s, and the big bank crisis at the end of the 1980s. It all be traced to Volcker's experiment. Chairman Alan Greenspan's tightening in the early 1990s brought on a recession followed by our first jobless recovery. And his tightening in 2004 helped to bring on the global financial crisis in 2008 and another even longer jobless recovery. The only realistic way in which man, uh, monetary policy can, and can affect inflation is by significantly slowing down the economy and raising unemployment to alleviate wage pressures. Small rate crises do not re- uh, reduce inflation. It takes large rate hikes that create financial crisis, insolvency, and bankruptcies severe enough to crash the economy, followed by jobless recoveries. In other words, the Fed would be using an un- using unemployment as a tool to control the rate of inflation. The distribution effects of what will uh, that will likely enhance in the inequality. The pandemic has been very good for those at the top, but recovery has just started to improve conditions at the bottom, killing the recovery as means of re- reversing the progress made recently on raising incomes at the bottom. The evidence shows that in high inflation period, including the current one, the major contributors contributors are raising rent, uh, rent as well as oil and food prices. None of these is particularly interest incentives, or sorry, it's interest sensitive. People do not usually borrow to buy fuel for their cars, purchase groceries, or pay rent. Indeed, rising rates can even be perver- uh, perverse. Higher interest rates reduce home purchases as well as new home constructions, meaning that those who may have bought houses have to compete for a limited supply of rentals, pushing up rents and fuel measures inflation. Yeah, that's what we call a uh, was, oh, overcrowding of of uh, property buying by some of the bigger uh, real estate uh, companies. BlackRock or Blackstone being one of them, one of which actually uh, gets investments uh, from outside the country uh, who want to buy foreign land, as far as that part goes. Um, and as far as unemployment goes, actually, that's why uh, uh, the job guarantee is a big, uh, big um, proposal within MMTers uh, because that would actually do what employment, unemployment does in regards to inflation, except it would keep people employed and it would keep inflation down and it would keep the current, um, uh, oh, they call them stock, but you know, the current workforce uh, that may have lots of jobs through no fault in their own, and some of them fault their own, uh, at least working until something in the private sector actually uh, starts going again. Um, so the, the job the job guarantee would be a program fully funded by uh, the federal government to maintain employment for those who just lost their jobs or anybody, pretty much anybody who wants to work um, and who aren't currently working. That would be their version of the unemployment. This way, the person, their skills may be the same or may be upgraded and they might be able to be in the market for upgrade in regards to salary. Anyways, that's that's the that's the program I I am uh, I am advocating for. Anyway, 
Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, we need more domestic investment, not less. The pandemic has taught us that the United States must become less reliant on foreign products uh, production, and we need massive investments in alternative energy products to free us from the grips of OPEC Plus, which includes Russian oil production. Now that part, they're they're wrong about the uh, the the production side of the, and our reliance on it. We only get like four percent from Russia. Uh, you can get 41%, and we actually get a majority of whatever imports we do get from Canada, which is like 61%, I think. But uh, since this came out, I, I just really, I'm really sure, I thought it came out like earlier this year, but maybe I'm wrong about that. We actually have become a net export of, of uh, gas and oil. We still bring it in, but we also sell it. And we don't, and we don't sell the stuff we bring in, we sell the stuff we produce ourselves. So that would actually, if anything, would give us more leeway to be able to wean ourselves off of gas and oil and into renewable energies. But we do need to, but that all that stuff has to go through Congress for spending. Uh, so having the current people we have in there, in regards to the Joe Manchins in the world and and uh, Curse of Cinema, uh, are not beneficial for the for our future spending. Um, uh, for future spending bills, which would uh, then return, actually have a decent uh, prosperity for for the United States, and uh, you know, have oil and actually become a you know a beacon of climate change or uh, 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 trying to go ahead and try to remedy climate change. That's what I was trying to say. Anyway, we must find a better way to think about uh, a deal with infl uh, to think about and deal with inflation. There is one. There is no one size fits all approach uh, to inflation control. But what I clear, what is clear is that interest rates are a very uh, imprecise tool for influ uh, influencing prices. Interest rates actually set the set the price within the economy, so it's actually more or less uh, through through loans, whether it be home loans, personal loans, business loans, whatever, whatever interest rate gets uh, whatever the interest rate is on that loan that gets taxed on what the person does outside the outside the loan uh in the uh, overall economy uh that however okay uh, yeah that however requires uh, uh requires much more work and int in intentionality intentionality than the struggle of pen uh, i read that part okay so actually effectively i read the majority of it from the previous page anyway that's what I wanted to read as far as that part goes. Uh, and I don't like to see my ugly face. So let's see. Here we go. Um, yeah, so my overall look at that, I don't think, it, I mean, it's weird that I'm reading that and finding at least a couple of things that I find wrong with it. But I'm again. That's why this is. That's why this show is called Just Calvin uh, Learning from a uh, Cloudy Lens, or uh, Learning MMT from a Cloudy Lens, because I don't know all uh, everything about MMT, and I know there's ex uh, extenuating circumstances in, in, in when it comes to the foundation be of MMT. But last I checked, since we are a the, uh, the Fed is a net interest payer. Meaning, uh, if there's a spending bill, it gives it gives the Fed permission to produce uh, whatever uh, financial capital reserves that is needed to go into the banking system for it to be spent. Um, and since the pandemic hit, uh, they weren't able to bring in as much uh, reserves for an interest payment later on as they would like to. So there you go. Uh, there are MMTers out there that say that they don't see interest rates going past, uh, say, 2.5. There's actually there was actually a Fed uh, person uh, yesterday I saw that said uh, they need to slow down with the uh, with the interest rate increase because he, he doesn't see it going past 2.5, which apparently means that they only put enough uh, probably put aside enough to be able to pay the interest on that 2.5. I still say they're going to put uh, do a, a 2.8, but we'll have to find out as, as time goes on. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, subscribe, uh, comment if you wish, uh, share, and other things of that nature. And buy this shirt. You should know where the, you should know where the shirt is now. Anyway, 
Have a good night, Edwin, and I'll uh, I'll be putting some of my sub stack here pretty soon. Peace out for now.